Hi again then guys and welcome to the roughly monthly tradition that we have of breaking down the entire new update that drops in Gran Turismo Sport each time and of course some things change from the previous month such as circuit experience or fixing bugs in the game. As far as my game goes there are definitely still some bugs in there for instance the loading screens stay black instead of showing the car stuff like that. Those things, of course, generally tend to get ironed out in the smaller updates between the larger ones, so we'll have to see how that goes. The predominant meat of this update, and most of them really, is always the new cars and the new track or tracks. Now, we did not know anything really as far as the new circuit. We knew what the five cars were going to be, of course, because of the silhouettes, and later on this month we will have another couple of cars in the form of the Dallara, the Dallara Super Formula Vehicle, which will be another very nice addition to the game. And the reason why I say a couple of different variations is because of the multiple engine options that that car will reportedly have. Now as far as the new circuit that's come this time, it's not exactly everyone's number one pick. Of course there are going to be a ton of people who are not happy with this track. Not because it's a bad circuit, but because it isn't Spa, or it isn't Laguna Seca, or it isn't some other really well-known track. And of course I can understand that. I was hoping for Laguna Seca, but there was no reason to suspect it would be a track like that. In fact, I would have said that if it was, they'd have probably advertised it much more than they did. Now, as far as the five cars go, we've got the new Supra, which is no surprise at all. We've got the Huayra returning in its newer form. There was the 2011 and the 2013 in the previous game. Now we've got the newer of the two. It's got the chin splitter on the front. We've got the McLaren F1 GTR, as predicted, the 1995 Le Mans winner, and we, ha <coughs> excuse me, we have the SLR McLaren. McLaren, technically only in name, more of a Mercedes. That's my favourite car of the pack. I was looking forward to it very much. 600 grand. It's fairly expensive, but it is a supercar at the end of the day. And of course, last and kind of least, let's be honest, the Mazda MX-5 or the Mazda Roadster or the Mazda Miata depending on what you want to refer to it as, which is the cheapest car of the pack at just 17,000 credits. Now, we only have five cars, and a lot of people were disappointed with that, but I would say that the cars that we do have are actually very useful. Stuff like the Mazda is doubtless going to be very useful for lower classes, such as N100. It feels very good through corners. The Supra, interestingly enough, is 100,000 credits, so we will be able to use it to earn money, for instance, in Blue Moon Bay. I'm yet to test it, but I would not be surprised if it turns out to be very good. And stuff like the SLR and the Huayra will doubtless be very good on Route X. And in this video, you'll see some footage of me driving the Huayra, literally with like a 30-second tune setup, and it's already doing around 280. So, yeah, it's fast. <laughs> One of the quickest streetcars in the game already, which is really no surprise to anyone. I have no doubt that the SLR will be fast as well. Probably the car that most people want to know about first is that new Supra. So, of course, I'm going to do full reviews and tunes for all of these cars in the coming days, so be sure to stick around on the channel. But for now, I will say that the new Supra feels exactly how I expected it to. It's playful, it's fun, it's compact, and it has more thump than its physical size would usually suggest. And it's a very TVR-esque vehicle. It feels a lot like driving a Tuscan. That front engine, very long nose, relatively narrow frame but quite long, not too tall but not overly low either. It has a very similar profile to even the new TVR Griffith. I think that would make a great rival to this car. You're looking at about 335 horsepower. Of course, shares its technology with BMW. It's expensive. 100 grand is a lot for what it is. The, the Supra was always actually a very affordable car, so it's kind of lost that. But of course, this is not what the traditional Supra was. The Supra was a top-tier exotic as far as Japanese cars go, whereas this one, it simply isn't. It's a sports car, a pure sports car. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but for those of us who were expecting, or hoping even, for something more like the FT1, well, from that point of view, you could be disappointed, because Toyota could have made something that could have rivaled a GTR or an LFA, and what you ended up with was something that's more of a rival to a Porsche Cayman. Not a bad idea, but just not necessarily what as a name as iconic and as legendary as the Supra deserves. At least that's my opinion. As far as the McLaren goes, well, this is the standout of the pack in terms of the sound. Listen to this McLaren. You heard it at the start of the video. It sounds fantastic. I did not expect it to sound that good. In Gran Turismo 6, it sounded okay. It sounds fantastic now. 
But when that happens, it kind of disappoints me because when you hear cars sound as good as this one does, it makes you wonder why the other ones don't have that kind of effort put in. And it's a shame because that leads me onto the SLR. The SLR is my favorite car of the pack purely because it's one of my favorite cars anyway. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound very impressive at all. Now, when you back off the throttle, it's got a nice little burble to it, but as somebody who's heard one in person, I can tell you it sounds far better than it does in the game. And of course, you could say that about any car, but the McLaren still sounds fantastic, and so do some others too. Even the Supra pops and burbles like you would want it to, but for some reason the SLR doesn't have that kind of care and attention put into it. That's kind of disappointing for me. Now as far as the MX-5, of course it's easy to skip over a car like that. I would say it feels great. The handling is very fun. It's actually not quite as tail happy as I would have expected from a small rear wheel drive MX-5 and even compared to how it used to feel I would say it's not quite as tail happy anymore. You've got barely any power but it's also super cheap as I said so very useful from that regard. And last but definitely not least, not the MX-5, I should have said the Huayra is last in the ones that I'll mention. The Huayra is overwhelmingly fast. Of course that's what most people use it for. As far as being a track car, it's not as ideal. I mean, it's not slow, but it's very temperamental, it's very skittish, very slippery. It's not as forgiving as the Zonda, but it's fast. And at the end of the day, if you can get a supercar that's fast enough on the straights, generally speaking, it'll get the job done one way or another. So the Huayra is easily the most expensive of the pack, 1.35 million. The Supra is, as I said, 100 grand, the Mazda is 17,000, the SLR is 600,000, and the McLaren is a very reasonable 450. And it is, of course, in Group 3 as predicted. So a fantastic rival to stuff like the Ford GT Spec 2 that was added before, others too that were already in the game from day one. Now, as far as the total price of what it will cost you, one of the main advantages of having only five cars is it doesn't cost that much to buy all five of them. 2.5 million credits and you'll have all five. Now, as far as finally for now in this review, the new circuit, Autopolis in Japan. It's an interesting track. A lot of people are going to be disappointed, as I mentioned earlier, because it's not some Spa or Laguna Seca or Monaco level track. That's all true. I don't disagree with any of those sentiments. However, that doesn't make it a bad circuit. So try and put that to one side, because getting angry about those other tracks not being in the game is not going to change the fact that they're not. So all you can do is wait and hope. What we have to work with is this. So at least try and get some enjoyment out of that. And who knows, it might just grow on you. Now for me, for instance, I had no familiarity with this track. I went on it for the first time in the SLR that you can see in this video. I think it's a charming little track. It's not the kind of track that I would spend a huge amount of time on because, as I've said before, I prefer really long circuits, but it's fun. It reminds me very much so of the Red Bull Ring. It's got a lot in common with that track. It's got some undulation, but it's fairly flat overall. The corners are mostly sweeping, very conducive to drifting. A lap only takes a couple of minutes. So yeah, I think it's a pretty nice little track. For me, even something like the Red Bull Ring doesn't get me hugely excited, so there's not that much difference between something like that and this one for me, even though I've heard of the Red Bull Ring before. So overall, the track I think is probably my least favourite part of the update. The cars themselves I think are pretty good. I've wanted the SLR for a long time. The new Supra, we already knew, it was just a matter of time. The McLaren is an icon for a reason. It's not just fast, it is a winner. And the Huayra, of course, is going to be put to a lot of use on Route X, especially up against GTR Nismos, and to some degree Veyrons and that kind of club, kind of bringing back the top-tier kids from Gran Turismo 6 in terms of the car selection. So overall, I think this is an interesting pack. It's kind of not finished, really, for the month, because we're getting the Super Formula cars. Will that come with the new track? I wouldn't have thought so. But at least we will be getting the seven cars ultimately in, yeah, yeah, seven cars with the two different engine variations instead of just five. So it seems like Polyphony might be making up for the, the time difference in the update, maybe, who knows. But ultimately, I think it's a cool little pack, it doesn't have the size and scope of some of the others. A ton of people will probably be disappointed with it. But those kind of people are generally going to be disappointed no matter what you do. So overall, that's it for my thoughts. As I said, stick around on the channel. I'll be tuning all of the cars, reviewing all of them, maybe even getting some rivals matches down as well. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.